Hey, in today's video, I'm going to teach you guys how to spray a knockdown texture. I'm not just going to show you. I'm gonna walk you through a little guide here and show you how to change the shape and look of your texture and how to spray it. And we're gonna do that right after this. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Kilted Guy videos here on YouTube. And I wanna thank everybody for stopping by because it's my goal here on that Kilted Guy videos to teach you guys how to do your own home improvement projects, to save you money, and to give you pride in workmanship. And we're gonna teach you how to do it right. That's our saying here. Before I go too much further, I wanna remind you to be sure and check out the description down below. We got some good information in there about free guides, our website, our Amazon store, links to these tools and so on. And if you haven't yet subscribed, be sure and click that subscribe button like you see here and click on the bell icon if you wanna be notified each time we put out a video. We're trying to put out about two videos a week teaching you guys all kinds of tips, tricks, and techniques for your home improvement projects. So speaking of learning, let's get right into this. What we're going to do is teach you how to spray three different styles of knockdown texture, basically light, medium, and heavy. And I'm gonna show you what influences how that works. Okay, in today's video, if you really wanna learn how to do this, I would watch this whole video. If you skip right to the part where I do it, you're not gonna learn anything, trust me. You need to understand what I'm gonna show you here. So let's get into that part here. And what we're going to use today is a professional style hopper. There are various styles of this. This is actually just a little $30 hopper. I've got a link to it in my description. They, this is a no name basically. And it's turned out to be one of my, my favorites. I've got the, uh, I've got about four texture hoppers and this one does a great job. Now the disadvantage on this one is it has a smaller hopper up here. So like if we compare that to my other style, this is a name brand one here. This is my parts hopper. You can see it's kind of stripped down. This is by Wallboard Tools. I do have another wallboard that is functional. That's why I've used parts off of it. But you can see the difference is the hopper size. And other than that, that's the main difference. And honestly, I really like the way this little cheap thing works. One of the things I like is this, this stout trigger pull. That one was getting, my others are both getting kind of spongy right here and that causes this little piston in here to not seat well and so it drips a lot. Well, this one, you don't have that problem with that stronger spring. Now, might wear your hand out a little bit more but I'll show you what happens. This part right here is where the air comes out of. It's routed through here and then it seats against this nozzle tip in here. These are interchangeable. I'll show you on screen here in a minute. There's three or four sizes of these. There's basically small, medium, and large, and then there's a cone-shaped one we use for spraying the good old popcorn texture. So when you pull the trigger, it pulls this away from that tip and that allows that air to hit the mud that's near this tip opening and it breaks it up. And so I'll explain how that affects it here in a minute. But when this gets weak, like it does on those, it just doesn't seat well and so it leaks a lot. So the first thing I wanna do is go over the variables that affect how this pattern is gonna come out. Cause you can make this sprayer here spray really tiny drops, medium sized drops, or really large drops. I've just outlined two, two styles. Hey, I can't talk today. Two styles here, the fine texture and a heavy texture. Of course, you can find a blend in between there. So what gives you a fine, small drop, tiny texture? That would be a small tip size. Kind of sounds obvious, doesn't it? a higher CFM, by, by CFM I'm talking about the cubic feet per minute of air, so the more air you let go through the gun, the more it's gonna break it up. And I'll show you more about that, but we do that with this little valve here. You can hear, it lets the air through, so the more air I let through, the smaller the drops are. The next thing would be a short trigger pull. As I showed you here, the more you pull it, the further away it gets, well, 
the less you pull, the closer it is to the tip. So only a little bit of mud gets in there, it breaks it up finer. If you pull it really far, more mud gets up there, it shoots out bigger drops. And then the final thing would be the thinness of the mud. The thinner the mud, the more it can break it up. The thicker the mud, the less it can break it up. Now you don't wanna get it too thick, and I'll show you that in a minute, because it has to gravity flow through there, and if it's too thick, it's just not gonna flow. So on the opposite side, if you want a heavy texture, you want a large tip size, a low CFM, just a little bit of air, the less air, the bigger the drops, and you want a long trigger pull and thicker mud. Now that doesn't mean you want all of those. You vary them according to what you want. All right, now when I spray, I mainly adjust a couple things at a time. I don't necessarily adjust everything. Like I can have a small tip size and still get some pretty big drops by having lower air or a longer pole and thicker mud. It just depends kind of what I've got in my bucket. And so the main things I concentrate are on are the CFM. Let's just put a star right here and the trigger pole. With those two variables right there, you can change this quite a bit but if you want to change it even more but even bigger drops then adjust these other things but if you just focus on these two things i'll show you how you can just change a lot with that yeah so for example today we're not going to change the thickness of the mud we're not going to change the tip size so we're really just going to vary these two things and give us three different types of texture so let's go ahead and get into that. Okay, because this is a knockdown texture and you have to spray it on and let it sit for a little bit. I'm going to spray this one first and I'm going to demonstrate what happens if you don't give it long enough so that you understand what to look for when you're letting this set up. Now I'm sure you're going to wonder how thick the texture should be. That's always a question. How thin should I be and what do I use? Okay, first of all, I'm just using box mud. You can use pretty much whatever you've got on hand because most all of it will work for texture. This is plus three. You can use the green lab label all purpose, whatever, whatever you have. You take your box mud and you thin it down until it's really thin. You can see it pours out of here. I would call this um, a medium thin because if you want a fine orange peel, I would go even thinner than that. So there's a whole cup, try and give you a better idea. You can see, as everybody likes to say, it's kind of like pancake batter, but for a fine orange peel, you actually want it thinner than that, unless you like them really thin pancakes. So let's add a little texture here. I normally just pour it out of the bucket, honestly, but when I'm doing small stuff, I have that dipping cup. But first thing I would mention is before you just start spraying, find something off to the side, some masking, some plastic, something to test your pattern out on so that you have an idea of what you're gonna get because you need to know if you got these variables adjusted right. I should also point out this adjustment knob on the back here, all this does is stop you from pulling it too far so if you want to spray a lot, you set this to where you pull this trigger at the maximum and it stops against that. That way you can just hang on and spray. You don't have to adjust with your hand each time. I'm pretty used to it, so I normally just adjust as I go, but that's what that's about. So there's really only two adjustments on the gun. Okay, that just gives us our first pattern. What can you knock it down with? Well, I've got three things here. This is my favorite. It's a very flexible plastic knife. It's really forgiving, knocks down a wide area, doesn't tend to leave corner, it doesn't dig into the corners and damage your texture as much. And you can put it on extension pole if you want. So that's, that's the one I use on a daily basis. There is this magic trowel. This is good. Uh, you can knock down with it. It's not my favorite but it does do a decent job and it's pretty good for skim coating, especially you guys, it'll smooth things out nicely. You can even get this little bitty knockdown knife, which I bought it and I don't think I've ever used it, but I thought it'd be handy for little bitty patch areas. 
but for bigger areas, I'd get the bigger knife. And then you can't even use your, your mudding knives. You could use a six if you don't leave lines like on a small area, but a 12 would be better and just have a very light touch. So let's go ahead and we'll use the forgiving one and knock this down too early. It hasn't really set up long enough. I'll tell you what to look for in a minute, but first of all, let's just go. And that's actually not too bad. I, I let that set just long enough. If you want a nice heavy pattern, that's it. But we're gonna let that set a little bit longer. We'll come back to that. And I will show you what the difference is, how that one won't knock down quite as much. And this one, like I say, is very forgiving. So just to demonstrate, if you were to use a metal knife, they're a lot harsher. So let's just do this bottom part here. And this is with a pretty light touch, but it's just smearing quite a bit, whereas this one knocked it down right. And if I wanted to, just a little bit more pressure, and I could totally smear that. And you usually don't want that. Maybe you do if you do, there you go. Now let's move on to spraying the light, medium, and heavy. Now I will point out too, I scraped all that off because you don't want any dried, bumpy stuff. Then your knife will hit it, it'll jump, and you'll leave chatter marks. So your wall should be nice and smooth before you start. And I painted this kind of a greenish color on purpose. It doesn't come this way because I feel like this is gonna make the texture show up better for you guys on video. So I went that extra, extra step to try and make it so you can see it better. So we're gonna start with the light. So that means a lot of air, a light trigger pull. That'll give us a pretty small pattern. And then of course, if you spray less of it, you're gonna end up with a lighter knockdown. So again, test off to the side somewhere. I tend to like to go in mostly in a pattern. So left to right, up and down. And I usually like to go over it twice. So you overlap about 50% each time and then go back over it about 50%. So go for about half what you want on the first pass and work up to it. Or you can go in circles, but don't just go in a random pattern. Uh, you'll get a very random texture and it usually doesn't look so good. But circles work if you do pretty even circles. Okay, we're gonna leave it at that for the light. Now we're, we'll go over here. We're gonna pull the trigger a little bit more, slightly less airflow, and that's the only difference. And we're gonna put more of it on. You could do the same pattern and just spray more of it and you'll get the same medium knockdown. Okay, I'll take pictures of these two and show them to you. Uh, you can see there's a little bit bigger drops and a little bit more of them for the medium. Now we're gonna do the heavy. Okay, that's it. Now we're going to let this set. Now, how long do you let it sit? What you might want to do is have you a scrap piece off to the side, spray that and then spray your area. And then you can test on that. I can tell by looking, but I still test it a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll watch it. Right now it's got a lot of shine because of all the moisture in it. As it uh, evaporates some of that moisture, it'll get a little bit duller and duller. 
Okay, here's another variable that affects all this. This is why I can't just give you a time. The air temperature, the humidity, the airflow in the room affect it. But another big factor is, is it painted? Well, I painted this. So that's actually going to slow down the drying time because normally the raw drywall, if you're doing new construction, will pull the moisture right out of it and it'll set up quicker. So when you spray it over paint like this, it takes longer for it to get ready to knock down. So that's another variable when you're doing a patch and I'm gonna do a separate video on patching texture and knockdown and orange peel both have different variables on the patching. So they're two different animals. And again, I'll try and put out a separate video on that. Now, for those of you watching this knockdown video, if you're looking to do just a small section, let's say up to a foot, watch my video on doing it with a sponge. And because with that thing, you don't have to get out all this equipment. You can actually do your, your match and patch with just that sponge, so much easier. So we'll come back to this here in a minute. Okay, I think this is set up decently. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one, like I said. It has set up, yeah, pretty decent. So using our knife here, if you wanna keep a six inch handy or some other little putty knife and always keep your blade clean because it can kind of dry up on here in between. And if you do very much, it'll roll over on the back here. So if you see this blade getting dirty, clean it. Okay, so using about the same pressure, I'll show you a close up of this too, but you can see that this section here didn't knock down as much as this section, and this one knocked down even more where I used the metal knife. So that shows how you wanna let it set up more to get less flatter areas and knock it down sooner to get wider flatter areas. So like I said, I usually test these before I go too far. They, they look fine. The, the smaller one often doesn't need to set up as much anyway. So let's just go ahead and try this. I like to go across them two different ways because if you go all one way, you tend to pull the mud and it gets a pattern. It looks like it's flowing almost, and I like mine to be more random. So there's the, the lighter one, and I put a little more pressure here and got just a little bit more of a closer to medium, but let's go ahead and do the medium now. So there's a decent medium knockdown. Now we'll move on to the heavy. So you can see the difference there. Heavy, medium, light. That's really all there is to it. I hope that helped you guys out. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments. I appreciate your comments, even if you're just going to say hello. And if, it, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and be sure and subscribe and click that bell icon. We will see you on the next video. Take care.